Good evening, this is CTV News. I'm Gina Barti. And I'm Patricia Vallon. We begin tonight with murder charges against a local police officer. Reporter Keisha Butts is following this case of Officer Michael Owen. She's joining us now with the latest. Keisha? That's right. Well, this incident is still unfolding. A veteran Prince George's County police officer faces up to 60 years behind bars for murder. Corporal Michael Owen is charged with second degree murder after allegedly shooting a hand cuffed man in his cruiser. The incident happened Monday evening near St. Barnabas Road in Temple Hills. Police say Owen was called to the scene after hearing reports that the victim allegedly hit multiple cars. The victim, 43-year-old William Green, was arrested and placed in the front seat of Owen's cruiser. Police say Green was in Owen's car for no more than 30 minutes before he was reportedly shot seven times. A press conference was held last night at police headquarters. able to come to our community this evening and offer you a reasonable explanation for the events that occurred last night. I have concluded that what happened last night is a crime. Having uh, had the opportunity to be briefed by the department, I should tell you that there is absolutely nothing that is acceptable about this incident. What I think needs to be done, I think Hank needs to step down. There's just entirely too much stuff that's happened under his watch, and I don't believe that he is the person that we need to be um, in a chief's position. A judge declared no bond st status for Owen this afternoon. Police say Owen also fatally shot a man while on duty in 2011. Now, Keisha, I know you were at the press conference last night, and I know body cameras have been a very big topic here in the county in terms of police officers wearing them. Was Corporal Owens wearing a body cam? So, Chief of Police Hank Swinski says that Corporal Owen was not wearing a body camera. Mm. Okay. okay, so we'll have to see if they ever become uh, department-wide at this point. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thank you. A reaction to that police-involved shooting is pouring in. The American Civil Liberties Union has released a statement demanding transparency and accountability for the shooting death of William Green while in custody. Meantime, Bob Ross of the NAACP says he has been in contact with Police Chief Stawinski. Ross calls the shooting a tragedy that never should have happened. He also says he's surprised the department charged the accused officer so quickly. And as mentioned, that incident was not captured by a body-worn camera. Ross is renewing his calls for the technology department-wide. Well, no confirmed cases of the novel coronavirus in Maryland. However, one person remains in isolation pending CDC testing results. Governor Larry Hogan detailed steps that state officials are taking to respond to the recent outbreak in Asia. The activation level at Maryland's Emergency Operations Center has been raised to enhanced, and the Department of Health has issued clinical guidance to medical professionals across the state. Symptoms of the infection include fever, cough, shortness of breath, and pneumonia. Testing for the virus must be done by the Centers for Disease Control. The death of Olivia Perigal, a student from the University of Maryland who died after contracting the adenovirus, has prompted a local lawmaker to push state universities to come up with an outbreak plan. House Bill 187 would require colleges to submit an outbreak response plan to the Maryland Department of Health each year. The schools would be required to follow certain protocols and consult the state health department and the Maryland Higher Education Commission. So what this bill would do is to require that, you know, there is an, a uh, response, a plan, that it be filed with the Department of Health um, and that they work with the community and inform them so it helps communication um, as well, especially given, for example, we have the coronavirus right now, right? Um, so it's, it's a good thing to have. The bill has been cross-filed in the Senate. Meantime, an interesting phase of the impeachment trial is about to get underway, and you might call it a Q&A session. With opening um, arguments complete, here's how it will work. The senators must submit their questions in writing to the presiding officer, Chief Justice John Roberts. The queries must be directed to either the House impeachment managers 
or Senate lawyers, not both. Senators cannot ask each other questions, nor can they respond after their questions are answered. The President's counsel has argued that the alleged conduct set out in the articles does not violate a criminal statute and thus may not constitute grounds for impeachment as high crimes and misdemeanors. Does this reasoning imply that if the President does not violate a criminal statute, he could not be impeached for abuses of power? Mr. Chief Justice, Senators, I appreciate the question. The simple answer is that a President can be impeached without a statutory crime being committed. That was the, the position and the question was rejected in President Nixon's case and rejected again in President Clinton's case. It should be rejected here in President Trump's case. Senators will have up to 16 hours over the course of two days to ask questions.